I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Oh, hi, sorry. I was just thinking about the three little pigs story and I can't get enough of it. So entertaining. That author is a true artist. I mean, what could be more interesting than three pigs building their own houses only to have a big bad wolf come along and blow them down? Well, all but one, that is. Do you want to know a secret? Sometimes stories about true events can be just as entertaining as fiction. Authors can use their words like paintbrushes to enhance both types of stories. In today's lesson, we will learn about literary nonfiction. This is literature that uses elements of fiction writing to immerse readers in real life stories. We'll review the elements of fiction that authors use in literary nonfiction and learn what makes it a unique genre of writing. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the elements of fiction used in literary nonfiction and explain how those elements enhance literary nonfiction. I can't wait to do some close reading and explore how an author can make facts as creative as fiction. Are you intrigued yet? Let's get started. Pigs don't build houses and they especially don't talk. But I do know about a man who really did help his family build several houses over 150 years ago. And many of them can still be visited to this day. You want to know who this man was? Abraham Lincoln. That's right. Honest Abe, the 16th President of the United States of America. Let's read a bit of nonfiction together to learn more about the houses he built. Abraham Lincoln helped build a log cabin for his family in the Indiana wilderness. This experience shaped his character, becoming a symbol of his humble beginnings and American self-reliance. The nonfiction passage provides good information to help us understand some facts about Abraham Lincoln. Let's try to revise it to fit a literary nonfiction style. If we use some fiction elements to immerse our readers in this real life story, how might the passage change? I think we could splash the passage with some color by adding in figurative language. Perhaps a dash of imagery and symbolism could brighten things up a bit. Let's give it a try. In the heart of Indiana's wilderness, Abraham Lincoln and his family worked together to build a home of their own. They wrestled heavy logs from the towering trees, each swing of the axe a beat in the song of their labor. The rhythmic thud of mallet on chisel echoed like a heartbeat, pulsing with a resilience and self-sufficiency vital for survival in the untamed frontier. As the modest cabin took shape, it became a symbol of their determination, like an oak tree standing firm through life's storms. Whoa! Same story, but this time we really have some artistry at work! When I read the new paragraph, I feel like I'm right there in the wilderness with the Lincolns! It uses elements of fiction to present the facts about this historical figure in a way that immerses the reader in the experience. How does this version of the story add to the facts we first read? Does it make you sense anything beyond the words? I can picture the Lincolns wrestling logs from towering trees. I can hear the rhythm of their tools. And I can think about the deep roots of an oak tree and how that symbolizes the strength of this family. This is what literary nonfiction is all about. While nonfiction may tell the reader about a topic, literary nonfiction works to show the story to the reader and build something bigger than just words on the page. 
There are many types of writing that use a literary nonfiction style. So let's take a look at some of the most common ones you'll encounter. Works of literature that tell a real person's whole life story are either autobiographies or biographies. Do you know the difference between the two? Well, in biographies, an author writes about someone else's life story, like the excerpt we read about Abraham Lincoln. But in autobiographies, the authors write about their own lives. Speaking of writing about your own life, have you ever written in your own diary? Often, people write creatively as they express personal thoughts in their diaries. One historical diary written by a young girl even became known as a work of classic literature. Have you ever heard of it? It's the diary of Anne Frank, the real thoughts and daily records of a young girl during the Holocaust. She did not just present the facts of her days, but wrote with the artistry of a fiction writer, bringing readers across generations into her life. Other literary nonfiction works you might read are memoirs and personal narrative essays. These are a lot like autobiographies, except they don't tell the whole life story. A memoir just focuses on key experiences from the author's life that work together to explore specific themes. And personal narrative essays focus on an even more narrow and specific experience. No matter which types of literary nonfiction you read, you will recognize elements of fiction like plot, characters, setting, figurative language, point of view, tone, mood, and theme. The elements help authors shape their stories about real life people and events just the same way they do for fictional events. You will read several works of literary nonfiction in this unit. Remember, the same skills you use to understand and think about fiction apply to literary nonfiction too. The only difference is that these stories are actually true. You may not be reading about any talking pigs or huffing and puffing wolves, but I can assure you that you will be entertained as you step into the real worlds of some very interesting people you will meet through the artistry of literary nonfiction. See you next time, readers. Hey.